Hello everyone, I'm Monica Beckwith and welcome to jcon.dev. Today I'm going to talk about uh, some new garbage collectors that have been introduced since G1GC. G1GC, which is now the default collector, has uh, introduced certain concepts such as incremental compaction and regeneralized heap in which now the newer low latency garbage collectors in OpenJK are following. And they're building on that while trying to maintain uh, low pause times, as in less than 10 milliseconds. So let's li dive into these new collectors, and then we'll compare and contrast them with G1GC. So here's the agenda. I want to talk about what it means to be a stop the world collector versus what it means to do concurrent collection. I will also talk about the heap layout, which is uh, when I was talking about regionalized heap, what does that mean? And what does it mean to be generational as well? I will talk about the commonalities between G1, Shenandoah, and ZGC, and, and I'll talk about how a particular collection happens in these two collectors, in all, these three collectors. Uh, I'll do a quick introduction to all these collectors and quick uh, set of comparison uh, table between the collectors and then we dive into the performance char charts that I have. Now let's look at stop the world versus concurrent collections. In the past, when we were talking about throughput collector, also known as parallel collector, which was the default for JDK 8 and, and the prior releases of JDK, we always talked about stop the world with the concept of a global stop the world pause. So here we see that your application threads were proceeding and a save point was requested. Right. The save point is requested here because the GC has to perform its activity because there was an allocation failure. So these threads now take their own time to come to a halt. This time is called time to save point. Okay. After that, the GC threads will resume and they will try to reclaim the heap space. And when your GC is completed, that's where the application thirds resume. Now, this entire uh, the highlighted area here constitutes the pause. So this is your stop the world global pause. With these new collectors, especially since ZGC arrived, there, there is a concept of thread local handshakes. So basically, your application threads are going on, and then there's an allocation failure, so a save point is requested, and, and then your threads take their own time to come to a halt. And as each thread comes to a halt, there'll be a handshake of sorts, like, hey, give me a thread stack information, etc. And that's where the application threads can resume, and then the GC threads are are working in the background to be able to uh, make concurrently with your application so that they can do their GC tasks. So this concept is very, very useful so that we don't see a single global pause, but we see these kind of small uh, handshakes happening between the application threads and the GC threads. Now let's look at what it means to uh, to do a GC cycle concurrently. So in concurrent GC, you have these application threads. And as your application threads keep allocating uh, objects on the heap, there may be various thresholds that may be measured to see if they have been crossed. So in this particular case, they keep allocating, and a threshold has been crossed now. And then you have a, uh, an initial stop the world pause here. The stop the world pause is called initial mark, where you used to start from the root set. So that work is done by 
GC threads. And then your GC threads work in the background concurrently with your application threads. So application threads have resumed, as you can see here, while GC work is happening concurrently. Because your um, mutate application threads are also known as mutator threads, and because your mutator threads were working in the foreground while your GC was working in the background, there is a possibility that uh, the object graph has been uh, updated, right? So there's a lot of mutation that happening, and the live object graph ha may have been updated. So what we do is we bring the application threads to a halt, and that's what you see is a stop the world pause, the second one, which is called a remark. And your GC threads will just do their work. The the, it's also called final mark, so the final mark happens right there. And then the GC threads also work in the background until the next threshold is crossed and so on and so forth. Now that we understand the difference between um, a stop the world pause and a concurrent uh, GC cycle, let's try building on the groundwork so that we can talk about the commonalities between these garbage collectors. So the two concepts that I want to cover in this section are the regionalized heap, as well as what does it mean to be a generational garbage collector. Um, a regionalized heap is basically the same heap that you've been used to, and now it's now divided into regions. Okay. And if I compare the same heap that I showed you earlier, um, you could also say talk about that in terms of generations. So you could say that that segment over there is the young generation, and and then the next one is called the old generation. Okay. Now the generational heap itself can be regionalized as well, and that's what we see in G1 GC. It's it's generational as well as regionalized. Or you could just have regionalized heap, which is what we see in ZGC and Shenandoah. Okay. So that's the basic. Now let's look at these, uh, the regionalized concept and generational concept, and kind of trying to, again, define the commonalities between G1GC and Shenandoah and, and uh, ZGC. So the whole uh, the concept boils down to be copying collector. And basically, you're copying from the from space into the to space. So let's look at the same heap that I had shown earlier. And to be able to talk about this, uh, uh, the, the copying collector, let's talk about the two spaces that I just mentioned, from space and to space. So as your heap starts getting filled, as your from space starts getting filled, basically your mutators are allocating objects into the from space. Now that's the first trigger of your GC cycle. Okay? Uh, and that means that we have to start from the root set. So what is a GC root? A GC root is basically your static variables, your thread stacks, and depending on how many threads you have, all the stack of uh, the threads and any JNI references and so on. So here I'm showing that we have these blue highlighted uh, uh, objects as your GC roots. And from the roots, we go and uh, you know trace the live object graph into the heap. So what the highlights show you here are basically um, live objects. Now it's time to, to perform uh, the copying. So basically, the, where we move the live objects into the two space as shown here. And now we can reclaim the uh, from space. This not only helps uh, cache locality, and uh, it also has a smaller footprint. So here we go. Now we can reclaim back the from space, and, and our to space now acts as the from space. So we keep our allocation. We continue allocating of the new from space, so like so. So objects get into the from space, and then we'll move, we'll sieve it into the to space. So it's kind of back and forth. From becomes to, to becomes from, and so on and so forth. Now let's look at the concept of free and occupied regions. So 
the heap, the regionalized heap as shown here, can have at any given time uh, the same object that we showed earlier, uh, uh, like in the from space and to space concept, but it doesn't always have to be right next to each other. So basically, allocation, these regions that can that form the young generation or the old generation or the from space and to space, they don't really have to be contiguous unless the object size demands the contiguous uh, space. They can, at any given time, you will have a bunch of occupied regions as well as non-occupied regions. So, and the way you kind of understand um, the non-occupied ones is by a uh, list. And so in G1GC's case, for example, there's a list of free regions. And if you're also generational, uh, at any given time, these occupied regions could be the of, from the young gen or the old gen or even humongous. Like I said, if you have bigger objects and you need contiguous uh, slots. So right here, you can see these are contiguous. Now that we've understood what it means to uh, be to, to have occupied regions, how do we claim back uh, space? You know, whatever is free, how do we claim that back? So there is this concept of collection set, and then there is a priority in which we can collect the objects in a collection set. Uh, and that is the concept. That is very. It's very important to have this kind of priority because we want to ha achieve incremental compaction. So let's look at more into this one. So what I've shown here are some objects, uh, some occupied regions with objects, and some of them are live, as shown by the highlights, and some of them are dead, as shown by just the white uh, object line. So uh, during uh, when you're doing the marking phase, you, during cleanup, you can identify regions that are completely full of garbage and you can reclaim them. So here there are two regions that are completely full of garbage and we can go ahead and reclaim those right there and then during cleanup. Then we identify regions with the most garbage. And that's the reason why we call it garbage first because we try to identify the regions with the most garbage and that's the pr priority. You want to collect the least expensive regions. So in this particular case, we found these two regions, which has only one live object. Right. So as we collect them, we move them from the from space to the to space. So in this particular case, we move those live objects into the to space. Now, the priority is to make sure that you're reclaiming regions with most garbage, like I said, hence the name garbage first in G1GC's case. What you want to also do, uh, these kind of whatever we want to collect, it's also called reclamation or relocation. Uh, these all uh, regions are supposed to be a set, and the set is called the collection set. So during every um, cycle that collects these regions, we want to make sure that we can uh, achieve and, co and collect and reclaim uh, the heap space in, uh, that's provided by the regions in the collection set. And uh, for all generation regions, there'll be, if it's a generational heap like G1, then there'll be some thresholds that you can, uh, that you have to meet or exceed uh, to be able to figure out the expense of the region and try to keep the expensive regions on the heap. So don't collect them until they become less expensive. And there's also a threshold of uh, only collect X percentage of the heap. So then that means that you're okay with uh, heap wastage so, because these are concurrent collectors. Uh, so you want to keep some uh, headroom uh, with respect to waste. So this is, like I mentioned, having these collection sets and, and, and having a priority in collecting these uh, uh, regions, we achieve what is called incremental compaction so or partial compaction. And and that is by only doing, uh, you know, kind of like a, in G1's case, you just arrange them from the least expensive to the most expensive uh, regions. And your initial collection sets will only incorporate the least expensive ones. And that's why if you see mixed collections in G1's case, you will see an upward trend with respect to the expense of the collection cycle. And the newer optimizations in G1GC 
are, are towards optimizing this uh, mix collection and not, not making it too expensive. To be able to, be able to trigger incremental compaction, you, again, there are thresholds. Uh, there's also this uh, initiating heap, heap occupancy percent, which is called IHOP. There's that threshold to trigger concurrent marking. So there are various thresholds. And usually, once you are uh, reclaim the the desired heap uh, and you have the amount of free space that you need, and that's where reclamation stops. So that's how we achieve incremental compaction. And incremental compaction doesn't need to be sub the world. So as you will find out soon, that in ZGC and Shenandoah's case, it is not stop the world. It's actually concur done concurrently, and that's why there is more. Uh, maintenance overhead, uh, but you, you can achieve really low pass times. In G1GC's case, the compaction is done uh, in a stop the world fashion. So let's look at the algorithm between uh, uh, and kind of compare and contrast the garbage collectors here. For simplicity's sake, what I've done is that I want to cover these garbage collectors based on the concept that I've introduced. So let's look at regionalized uh, heap or not, generational heap or not, and what kind of compaction, and if there's any target pass times that they need to, they, they strive to meet, as well as uh, if they have concurrent marking algorithm or not, and what type of the uh, concurrent marking algorithm is employed. So in G1GC's case, it is regionalized and it is generational. And the, it, the compaction is done in a stop the world fashion, as I mentioned earlier. And it's simply done by forwarding address, by putting the forwarding address in the header. Uh, because of the uh, G1 strives to maintain certain latency goals, but at the same time, it also tries to have this perfect balance between latency and throughput. So the target pause times are not too aggressive and it's about 200 milliseconds, and G1 does its best. In fact, in the later, uh, in, in the newer versions of G1, there's lots of improvements to make this, um, um, this goal very close to what you really observe, uh, and that goal is 200 milliseconds. The marking algorithm in, in G1GC is, is called uh, SATB, which is also known as snapshot at the beginning. And I won't be able to go into details of SATB, but I have some pointers that I can uh, point you to later on so you can learn uh, the algorithm if you need to. Shenandoah is regionalized, just like G1GC, but it's not generational. So it's basically a single generation uh, heap. And the compaction is done concurrently. And it has the same concept of forwarding pointer. But again, it's done concurrently, not in a stop the world uh, phase. So it's it's little more ha has a lot more overhead because now your mutators are also working along with while you're trying to uh, have this forwarding address, forwarding pointer. Uh, but because of the concurrent compaction, you you can achieve tighter pause time goals, and Shenandoah aims to achieve 10 milliseconds or less. The marking algorithm is the same as in G1GC's case, which is called snapshot at the beginning as well. ZGC is similar to Shenandoah in that it is regionalized but not generational. And again, it's similar to Shenandoah in the sense that uh, it does concurrent compaction. But the way that achieves this concurrent compaction is by the concept of colored pointers. So you have, uh, in, like for an for uh, for the heap, you will go through multi maps of the same uh, heap, and, and such that when we're going through the phases of um, of concurrent compaction, you will refer to one of these other one of these three uh, virtual maps. Target pause time is again as aggressive as Shenandoah's, which is 10 milliseconds or less, and the concurrent marking is done in a striped fashion. I'm going to quickly cover a few differences here. Uh, for example, uh, differences with respect to GC phases, marking algorithm, uh, compaction, and any barriers. So what I'm trying to cover here is just make sure that we have a cheat sheet kind of 
um, layout. And then if you uh, feel like learning more about that, then please go ahead and and go ahead and visit those concepts. Um, and I'll provide links at the end for those. So let's start with G1GC. So G1GC has multiple phases of uh, marking and compaction. So what you see is the initial mark part. So if you look at, remember the concurrent drawing that I had shown earlier, it had the initial mark and the remark, and which is what is shown here as initial mark and final marking. And then you have two concurrent uh, phases in between where you can do root region scanning as well as the marking in here. Cleanup is what I've shown here when we were able to reclaim those uh, regions that were full of garbage. So that can happen during uh, cleanup. And then uh, after marking is complete, we can do stop the world compaction, and which is known as incremental compaction or mixed GCs. And it's called mixed GCs because you have regions from the young gen and the old generation. That's why it's called a mixed collection. To, to understand more about the phases of G1, please go ahead and refer the book by Charlie Hunt, myself, Poonam, and Bengt. It's called the Java Performance Companion. Now let's look at ZGC in the same light. So again, we, we're looking at the same phases again for concurrent marking. So we have the initial mark, the final mark, and of course there's the concurrent marking in between. I talked about the striping where your threads will walk the object graph and mark. Now, one major difference between uh, G1GC and, and, and ZGC, of course, apart from the generational concept, it's also the comp way the compaction is carried out. So in ZGC, you do uh, concurrent compaction. So there is a preparation phase, and then you start the concurrent compaction, and then you continue that, and finally do a concurrent remap. To, and then the remap is done where you fix up all the pointers of the objects that were now moved. To read more about that, please refer uh, ZGC pairs slides on uh, ZGC that he had presented at JFocus. And finally, let's talk about Shenandoah. Shenandoah, as you can tell, is similar to the previous things that I mentioned with respect to concurrent marking, in that you see initial mark and final mark, and then there is a concurrent cleanup. Again, uh, Shenandoah, same as ZGC, has concurrent compaction, so you see uh, concurrent compaction, and you see the initial update reference, concurrent update reference, and then a final update. And then there's a concurrent cleanup. Concurrent cleanup is where you free the regions in the collection set. To read more about Shenandoah, please go ahead and refer the wiki linked right here. Now let's look at performance. Right? So um, as we talk about performance, we want to not only compare uh, LTS, but we also want to compare uh, the newer versions as we go along, right? So, and one of the benchmarks that I'm using here is called SpecJBB, okay? So, first let's look at SpecJBB with respect to JDK8 LTS, that's your graphs on the left. And then we will compare that with JDK11 LTS. So what we see, what, what I'm trying to show here is like run-to-run -run variability. So, when uh, JDK8 LTS, uh, was deployed, uh, we see even in the full system capacity, as in like the throughput metric, which is like used for capacity planning, and in the responsiveness metric, which is called critical JOPS, we see a lot of run-to-run -run variability, and that's because of the garbage collector. So uh, in JDK, the garbage collector, uh, the, that's the default uh, collector, is the parallel GC, throughput GC. So it doesn't have the concept of... Uh, of uh, this uh, pastime gold, and so uh, there's not much of adaptiveness in the in the sense that what G1 can offer. So in G1's case, you see a lot less variability, right? And again, I'm showing the standard deviation here, and you see that JDK11 is like showing much less of a standard deviation. Now let's look at out of box performance. So out of box basically means that you just specify um, like the min and max heap on the command line, and sometimes you want to give nursery um, as well. And in this case, we set the nursery to 130 gigs, whereas the max and initial heap was set to 150 gigs. So 
uh, you see a drastic improvement in in your responsiveness as soon as G1GC became the default GC, right? So JDK8, it was parallel GC, and 11 onwards, you will see G1GC, uh, which is a default. Now I'm going to also show with respect to uh, where the innovation happened. So what I'm trying to show is parallel GC, G1GC, and ZGC with respect to TIP and JDK11. I've not shown Shenandoah here because Shenandoah just recently started the backporting process. So I, hadn't, I haven't collected numbers on that yet. But as you see, there is there's improvements not only in the full system capacity, which is what I was talking about, the capacity planning, but also in the responsiveness, which is the critical JOPS, right? So there's always there's improvements in TIP, and that's what I talk about. Innovation happens at TIP. Now let's look at head-to-head -head performance. So what I did, so I always tell people that G1GC's a nursery, let it be more adaptive. Uh, and 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 if you don't specify XMN, which is the like initial nursery and final nursery as the same amount, and you let the nursery grow, then G1 GC has more room to uh, to to be adaptive and more responsive. So that's um, visible here in the sense that the responsiveness is slightly higher when I um, when I let G1 be a little more adaptive. And in parallel GC's case, uh, it, providing the new gen size makes it little, uh, perform slightly lower. But Chenandoa and ZGC both uh, show higher responsiveness, whereas your CIS for capacity planning, the scores are not that high. Uh, and, and that's probably what we would expect, you know, knowing what I told you earlier. They're more geared towards responsiveness, so lower latencies then they're geared towards the throughput. So I really um, I wanted to highlight that over here. And again, with SpecJBB, higher is better. And if, um, if, my, if my camera feed is covering that part, that's what I, uh, it says that it says higher is better. So with that, we come to the end of this presentation. And I leave you with some um, links here for future reading. Okay. Uh, there's also um, the papers covered here that talk about uh, C4 uh, collector, Zing C4 collector. Please go ahead and read more about that because certain concepts like loaded value barriers and stuff like that are covered very nicely in the C4 paper. Thank you all for your time. I really appreciated this opportunity.